What are we looking at when we take a look at number five? Is this really, in fact, an ellipse? Well, take a look. This formula has an x squared and a y squared, which means it's not a parabola. Also notice the coefficients are not the same. So I don't know what that means. Everything's got extra terms. We have an extra x, a linear x, and a linear y to go with our quadratics, and we have a constant. So let's rely on what I know already. Previously, I know that there's an x squared over an a squared, a y squared over b squared. They are added together, and it equals one on the right-hand side. What I can do is let's group some things together. Let's try to manipulate this in such a way that it makes our equation. Uh, what I'm not going to do is not going to complete a square right yet, but I feel like we may have to. Let's group all of our x's together. 4x squared minus 48x plus 9y squared plus 72y. And I want to move that 144 to the other side by subtracting it from both sides. Now, it's looking a little bit better, but it does bother me that I have a negative on that side. What I think I said I was going to do is possibly complete a square, but really I'm completing four squares for the x and nine squares for the y. Let's factor out GCFs. Four on the outside of an x squared minus 12x. I'm going to put a plus blank to complete that square. Pull out the nine of coefficient of the y squared, so nine times the quantity y squared plus eight y plus blank. Whatever I add to the left side, I must add the same amount, not the same number, the same amount to the right-hand side. So I put two blanks. What completes a single x squared? Divide by two, square it. You get 36 inside the parentheses. Adding one inside the parentheses really increases the left-hand side by four times 36, which is 144. So I add 144 to the opposite side to balance it out. Let's complete our second, our y squared. Divide by 2 is 4. Square it makes 16. If I add 16 inside of the parentheses, that means I've really added 9 sixteenths to the left, and 9 times 16 is also 144. Now I have two completed squares, which I can factor. The quantity x minus 6 squared times 4 plus the quantity y plus 4 squared times 9 equals 144. All right, so I'm not really sure that this is an ellipse. I thought maybe it's a circle because I have an x squared, I have a y squared, and it equals the radius squared. But because there are coefficients in front of these x's and y's, that's what kind of ruins it. I'm not really going to interpret where I, whether or not I think this is wider or taller until I make this equal to 1. What we're going to do is we're going to divide every term by 144 and rewrite our expression. On the left, I have the quantity x minus 6 squared. If I divide 4 by 144, I get a fraction. Okay, That's sort of like what's supposed to happen. And I believe it's 4 times 36 that gives us 144. Now what? 9 does go into 144 16 times. So the quantity y plus 4 squared divided by 16. Here's another fraction equals 1. All right, this is our formula that I'm now really familiar with, and we can analyze like we did above. Where's the center? 6, negative 4. Which is the major axis? 36 is larger. Square root it is 6 times 2 is 12 units. Divided by 2, not sorry, so not divided by 2. Square root it, 16. Square root makes 4. Times by 2 makes 8 units. Where are the vertices? There are 6 units left and right of the x coordinate. Let's subtract 6. Let's add 6 to the x coordinate. These are the locations of your vertices. Why did I go left and right? This was wider because the larger number is under the x. Your co-vertices is 4 units above and below the y-coordinate. So the x doesn't change. 4 units above, 4 units below. Finally, let's finish this. c squared equals a squared minus b squared. That makes c squared 20, or c is equal to plus or minus to root 5. We're going to add and subtract that to the x-coordinate because, again, this is a wider parabola. So 6 plus 2 root 5 comma negative 4. 6 minus 2 root 5 
comma negative 4. These would be the location of the two foci.